Good day everyone and welcome to another tutorial. As you can see, today we will be doing action lines. Now the example that you see, you don't have to only apply to the background. As you can see in this image, you can also apply this as a black and white image to the foreground by simply blocking out the center segment or whatever the case might be for your image. So let's get started. First of all, add a cylinder. As you can see, it's just a blank project. I already um, used all the possible enhancements to that I know about to make this as quick a project as possible. Press 1 for uh, what's the front view. Remember, it has to be orthographic. Now press U to unwrap it and just say cylinder projection. Now the reason I haven't resized it just yet is because if you do it like this, immediately you have it on the exact edges, top, bottom, and sides. The, the reason that this is super awesome is because we are going to make a, a procedural texture that loops around the cylinder so that we can simply adjust our camera's focal length. In this example, I'm going to try to not adjust the focal length. I'm simply going to try and adjust the cam, the, um, the cylinder to just first see if we actually need to adjust the focal length. If we don't, then it's a lot easier. Um, Mark it as double sided. Um, let's call it tunnel mat because that's the type of um, action lines we're going to be making, the tunnel vision kind. And mm, shadow, no need to shadows. The only reason I'm turning these things off is because it makes it a lot faster. You can see under my uh, render layers, everything is off except for solid, the combined, and the Z, and even these are turned off. The reason I turn these things off is so that I can get it as fast as possible. So just add a new texture. Let's call this one Cylinder Move. Don't need to change the type because we're going to be doing it in here. So go to texture, click use nodes. Let's just take that off. Sometimes it tends to crash. Okay. Let's add a cloud texture. Okay. Now this is a technique that God showed me a, a short while ago. Uh, it's loosely based on the technique that GIMP uses to make textures tileable. In this case, it's only on the horizontal or X axis. So what you need is a blend texture and a color ramp. So one will be like this, that you put it at 0.5, setting it to ease. Use color mix. And if you put that in there, you can, and you make this black, you can see that you have one side, like so. Okay, and then you go for scale, and you set it at the x-axis, minus 1. And then you add these two results together. And then you have a tileable texture on the horizontal, or x-axis. Now, obviously, you need a little segment in the middle. So you take the same blend texture. And you stick it in there, and you make this edge black, like so. And before you add it, you mix this. You can take the same texture if you want to, and add these two. Just make this black and add these together, let's just see what this one looks like. Ah, see it's the wrong, um, has to be there, there you go. And this has to be black, and then you can add them together, and that is what you get. 
Now you have a tileable noise texture for adjustment. Awesome. So now you can just take a color ramp and you need to up the contrast quite a bit so that we have fairly strong lines. Let's take it about like I like it if it's kind of sparse. Not too sparse. Okay. Scale it again. This time, let's make it about three. Okay. It's fine. If need be, we can reduce that. Let's start by reducing it anyway. Um, Okay, let's just smooth that out and subdivide. Why isn't it smoothing out? Oh, it just needs to be subdivided. I came across this little issue as well. Um, so, so I'm just going to subdivide it. Okay, now let's see what it does when we render it. Ah, see. That was good. That was really good. So let's go for our new layer, new render layer. Getting rid of those, getting rid of those. Okay. And there you have it. Look at that. I do want to just try and get these a little bit more out. It's not necessary, but let's just see what we can do about it. Okay, they've already been merged. That's fine. I just want to see if we can do something about them like this. I think that should smooth it out quite a bit without this having to be so high. Let's see what that looks like. Ah, see, that looks nice. Okay, that's awesome. Okay. It's wonderful. Just want to get back to solid view. This means we do not have to adjust the camera's focal length. I just want to turn off the grid. Okay. Okay, it's better. Nice and centered. The camera is not centered though. I can see that. It doesn't need to go that deep as we got out there. Let's just get the maximum out of these lines. So let's move the camera up. Okay. And now we get to adjust it. So we definitely need more on the x-axis. So let's make this like uh, six. And let's look at that. That looks pretty nice. No, it shouldn't be on one. Okay, so I'm gonna make it 0.5 and I'm just gonna stretch the point of the cone down, way down. In this origin. And just move the cone itself. Just a little troubleshooting here. Because we've added the loop cuts, we won't be able to use proportional editing to just pull the point down. We're just going to have to scale it along the z-axis, like that. Let's just move the camera down as well. Okay. Right. Yes, that looks cool. Create a little bit more contrast and add a touch more on the x axis. Stronger. And that's cool. Okay. So now we get to do the compositing. So I'm just going to render that again. And go into the node editor. OK. 
Okay, let's just move that over. Okay, first of all, we need to color it. So whatever color you have in mind, think of the strongest aspect of the color because we're starting on the outside and working in. So let's say we want to make this orange. I like it to be orange. So I'm going to stick it in there. Let's make it like that. Light-ish orange. Setting it to ease gives it a little bit extra contrast. Now, if you look at your Z-Pass, when you normalize it, that's what you see. If you use a color ramp, you can use overlay to create that um, from white to orange kind of look. By overlaying it to a fairly high degree, I use about 20 to 50. So let's start at 20. This has to be neutral. See what it does? Okay. Just want to increase that and decrease that a bit. Not all the way, just do there. Something along these lines should do it. Let's just put it to ease. So that it's as strong as possible. Okay. Let's put it on 50. Okay. And you can set this to add if you want to. Actually, recommend doing that. Put this to black. And we need to just reduce this one to be about there. Absolutely amazing. I think we can make this one a bit stronger though. Keep it at 16. Okay. Okay, that's our basic compositing for this. So now it needs to be animated. Oh yeah. Now in order to animate something like this, it's really not difficult because we already UV unwrapped it. So all you need to do is you need to move it along the Y axis. Don't think it's going to show there. I think you have to do it like this. See what it does? There you go. Can see, look at that. So, if you wanted to animate this, I would recommend setting a keyframe at your first frame. So, insert single keyframe, set one at 250 to be about 0.4, and say insert single keyframe. Now, let's see what direction this is going in because you don't always know so I'm just going to block out a piece and save it okay this one is going from the outside in I prefer it to be the other way around so I'm going to just flip this around but I'm not going to be doing it by changing the digits. I want to show you a cool trick how you can flip your animations. You can either use a dope sheet to do this or the graph editor. I think the graph editor is safer in this instance. You just select your points, 
you use scale and you use y minus 1. Simple as that. Now while we're in the graph editor, I want you to see something that it does. I know you've seen this many times in tutorials probably, but for those who haven't, I'm going to show you. You can see that it starts slow, goes fast, and then it ends slow. This is not conducive to any kind of animation work in this particular genre. So what you need to do is you just need to say extrapolation mode, linear, and oh, I have to set it to vector first. Ah, there we go. So there you go. You can see it continues on backward and continues forward basically infinitely. So you can um, extend the animation as far as your heart's desire is. Okay, that is fantastic. Now we simply need to do a speed test. So in your output folder, add a short video file. Let's make a test. And this will serve as our speed test. So I'm going to be using 20%. I'm going to turn off compositing so that it's as fast as possible. Encoding does not need to be that intense. Actually, it kind of, no, let's make it a thousand. Doesn't need to be intense. Okay, that looks good. Make sure you always save often. And let's hit animation. And that was like way too slow. Seriously, that was way too slow. So we need to like at least almost double the speed. So go into the dope sheet and take that end slider and put it about there. And let's try that again. Still faster. Let's put it at about there. I don't know if this is going to be ridiculous or not. Okay, let's go into the sequence editor. Add that. Mm, still a little on the slow side. Let's get rid of that and make it just a smidge faster. Let's see it. There we go, that looks cool. Okay. Now if you render that, you still get this. And you can add your compositing back. There we go, there's a composite. Okay, set this back to 50. I'm going to be rendering this out at 50 for the sake of speed. Um, because I need to get this done before the end of the day as well. The cool part about making this a cone is that you can adjust it. So let's use linear. Scroll up and just do this. I recommend actually keeping your camera in view so you can just see where in the world you're moving it to. And I'm going to add a shape key to create various positions. Just want to tap out there and call this one top. Make it full on. And then if you take this and you move it up, you've got it at the top. Then you can add another one, right. Okay, so now if you take this one and you take that one, you have more flexibility. And if you render it, you get the straight lines. Ha ha! So that's basically how you can uh, just use shape keys to create this control. So I'm just going to be turning this off. And I'm going to be rendering this straight on view and I'm going to be rendering it in just one of these corners on a, at a different on a different color. Just so you can see how all this works. Anyhow, stay tuned to see how you can do this effect using only a horizontal axis, which you can always just literally rotate to get other access as well.
Okay, now on to the next part. In this part, we are going to be doing horizontal lines. Now, as you can see, I just deleted the cone, um, but we're still going to be using the exact same material. We're just going to need to add a new cylinder and unwrap it again. So all you need to do is just add another cylinder, just like before. Remove the faces. Press 1 for orthographic view from the front. Unwrap. After you select everything, unwrap, cylinder projection, and you should see. This is awesome. And just make sure you smooth it out. That looks wonderful. Now you can simply rotate this on the Y axis. I said rotate it. Why well, isn't rotating? Because zero is not a good number to rotate something about. Okay, that helps a lot. Let's add the same material, the tunnel material. Make sure it aligns with the camera. It does, it looks nice. You can extend it on the X axis if you want to a little bit and then scale it along the local Z axis. Oh, on everyone except the local Z axis, sorry, my mistake. And if you were to render this out, we just need to invert our um, depth map. So that in, instead of this, you can have the other one, but you can also use this. I just haven't seen it as often as I've seen the other one. But I do know both are used. So if you wanted to use horizontal lines like this, you're welcome to. I prefer to have the white line in the center, so I'm just going to be flipping this around. Looks nice. Now we just need to adjust this. Okay, we're just going to have to adjust that first. Let's make it one. And let's turn this off completely, so we actually have some focus. Wow, this is going to be an interesting one. <laughs> uh, let's give it about a value of 5. Looks nice. And this one can ramp it up to 1. Take it down. In this case, the white line isn't always quite thick. Reduce it. There you go, that's better. One thing I would like to do though is I would like to stretch out these lines or just increase the contrast a little bit. I feel the lines are a bit overwhelming. So to do that, all you need to do is you just need to go back to your materials and reduce the black. Mm, I also want to add a little bit of scale to it. So instead of 10, we're going to be using 20. Let's see what that looks like. That's more like it. Okay. What we can do is we can um, just smoothen this out a little bit by increasing that and decreasing this. Let's make it about 3. I don't want it to be too weak, but I also don't want it to be too strong. Looks nice. You can use B spleen in this case. Just need to make it black so it's a little stronger on the edge. Something like that. And there you have it, horizontal lines. Uh, the animation process is exactly the same as the others. You just need to um, check which way it's going and make sure that it's going in that way. Or you can just reverse it in the uh, sequence editor. So I'm just going to save this before I do this, because I know it has a tendency to act a little funny. Okay, it's going this way. 
seems to be. Oh no, it's going this way actually. I had it the wrong way. Okay, so I'm going to be rendering this out in, on various angles. Remember, if you want to rotate this, you know, having it go from this corner to that corner, remember you are going to have to scale it relatively. I mean, look at this. If you put it like that, let's say we wanted to go from one corner to the other, you can see it cuts off there. So all you need to do is just scale along its relative Z axis, just so you can broaden it out a little bit. There you have it. And now all you need to do is just, like we did before, just shrink this back and possibly shrink it back so the lines are a little bit shorter as well. So in this case, we would be, let me just render that out. Yeah, I see these lines are way too thick. So we'll be going into the material editor, oh, texture editor, sorry, not material. And let's make it 40. And let's make it 0.8. Sorry, let me just get that out. Okay. And there you have it. So it's really, really, really simple to do these kinds of lines. But that's it for horizontal lines in this area. Stay tuned so that I can show you how to add these kinds of lines. We are on the final stretch. Um, in this section of the tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to add the thin action lines that focus on a specific area. Now, this is actually quite a lot more simple than uh, you might imagine. All you need to do is you need to add a cone and you need to invert it, absolutely. This might be odd, but I'm actually going to tell you to extrude this um, section and delete the bottom section just by deleting this point. Now you could have added a, cylin a cylinder, but that's not really the, the idea. The idea is to just take that, is to simply create a point, but without actually closing the point. Now delete the top part, the face, and that looks good. Now, in order to make this work, use Alt Control select all the edges and press Control E and say mark freestyle edge. So in this instance we will only be using this. So if you were to render this out right now you would see absolutely nothing good. So I'm just going to be removing post-processing for the moment and I'm going to be making this cone completely transparent because we don't want it showing up at all. So I'm just going to be doing that. Don't need to receive any <laughs> shadows. Uh, it doesn't even need to be traceable. Or use mist. Okay, that's fine, but we do need freestyle. We absolutely need freestyle. So I'm just going to be turning on a few things that I think could be the problem. In this case, we don't have a freestyle line set, which is our problem. I'm going to be using my default one, just setting it to 1 instead of 1.3. And I'm going to be turning these off again. Okay, we still don't have it showing for some inexplicable reason. Okay. Oh, it does need to be traceable and it doesn't need to be completely transparent. That's part of the problem. Okay. And there it shows. So what I am going to be doing is I am going to be turning off the contour, the border, the silhouette, and the crease, and the external contour and material boundary. Okay, like I said, it's not supposed to be transparent entirely so that you can actually see all this. 
Now, if you make sure you don't have contour and all those others on, you just have edge mark and material boundary, you will see the lines. Let's just make it clear by making our sky actually render and making the sky appear white. Uh, saturation off. Okay, that's fine. Let's see what that looks like. Still have to do it in shading. Uh, sky. There we go. Okay, that looks amazing. Let's just change the material color so we can actually see what we're doing. Okay. Now with our little shape selected, we want to add our action lines to this little area over here. So what you do now is you duplicate this and you tab into it, go into wireframe mode so you can see both and only rotate this ring slightly and scale it slightly. Now go to the edge and rotate it in the same direction only a little bit more. Now if you were to render that, there we go. QI range, start and 100. Now I think our little rings on the in the middle is a little bit too small, so I think we should make that just that bigger. Let's make this one quite a bit bigger. Not that much though. Something along those lines. Let's rotate it back a little bit. And let's make this a little bit more extreme. Something like that. And there you go. That's basically how you add these sort of action lines. You can always customize these, make more, make less. And then you can just multiply it over your image. You can make this even more random. Let me show you how can make it more random. You just um, select random points opposite each other. Set this to enable. Choose sharp. So you can even do something like that if you wanted to focus on one area specifically. And that's basically it for this um, tutorial. I want to refer you back to the um, first part of the tutorial we did. Um, in the examples I showed you out um, about Heyman's face having those white lines. Um, the way you make those is you simply use the um, one we used before. The way you make those is simply by using the, the cone we made before um, and instead of making the center white, you make the center black and you make it fill almost the entire frame and then you add that over your final image but not 100%, you have to um, adjust the opacity so that it fits your project. So I just want to show you what that looks like by showing you the actual edit from Esther. So here we are in the edit. If you wanted to see the thing without the um, add on it, if you were to put it on replace, you would see that this is what it looks like. Now, as you can see, I put a little bit more effort into this than I did the tutorials because the tutorials, I, um, you only have a certain amount of time. So um, just used it on add. And that is what it looks like. You just need to refresh the sequence, so otherwise it, it's going to stay stuck on that. Also, um, I rendered it at a solid 50%, but because I'm recording, it's kind of getting stuck as well. So, so it's literally just to suggest the shock that he um, got when he 
heard that the person that is absolutely not his most favorite person in the world is going to be receiving the honor instead of him. So, ha. <laughs> so, anyway, that's the, um, the effect. Anyhow, I'm so thankful that God showed me how to do this and that he actually was so adamant about me getting this tutorial done for today's update. Have a great one and God bless.